Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately and the power of his resurrection. All right, we're going to now turn our attention to Mark chapter 4, and let's pick it up in verse 26. And here we're talking about the growing process. We've been talking about God's word is seed. But now let's talk about how it grows. Verse 26 of Mark 4. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. All right. So here then, we scatter seed on the ground. It says as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Well, I was raised on a farm, along, and my wife was as well. And um, we, would, we would plant the seed and uh, in all of the hundreds of acres, and the, the soil would be black. But we ran the plow through, and the packer, and the, or, or the grill, rather, and the packer, and um, the seed was in the ground. We knew that. And, of course, I remember as a young man at home there, you know, I'd think about that a lot. You know, it's going to come up. I know it will, but it has to kind of sprout first underground, and I also knew that if you dig it up, it's dead. You got to leave it alone. And so it's the same with God's word, you know. It's a miracle, really. It's like an unseen force that goes to work and causes it to come to pass, even in the natural realm. There was an, it was like there was something, an unseen force underground that was working with that seed, and, and, and it'll cause it to come to pass. Now, it's the same with human beings. The heart is referred to as good soil. We just saw that back there a couple of verses back in, in Luke chapter 4. And here, you know, talking about ground, talking about rocks and all that sort of stuff. But, but then it comes to the place in verse 20. Uh, let's see, what have I got here? I've got Mark 4, I've got the wrong Bible. But then it comes on down here to verse 20. But these are the ones sown on good ground. And so good ground is a good heart. And so when you have a good heart, that's like rich soil. And so it's important that we keep our heart good, clean of all thorns and flesh and cares and anxieties of the world. Just keep it full of God, full of love, full of faith, full of trust, full of holiness, full of righteousness, and continually cleansed by the blood of Jesus. A good heart. And so then we see then the seed goes into the human heart. And then we have to make sure to leave it in there. Now, how would you take that seed out of your heart prematurely? With your mouth. Now, if you planted the seed by faith into your heart, then you better leave it there and let it grow. But now, if you get like the farmer, you know, gets real anxious, I need to just dig it up and see if anything's really happening, well, it'll kill the seed. Now, if you, as a Christian, you ask for something, you believe you received it, it's a seed that's sown into your heart, Leave it there and continue to water it, as we'll see here later. But don't dig it up. How would you dig it up? With your mouth. By saying, well, I don't know. It's been uh, two, three days already, and I haven't seen the answer to prayer. I wonder what went wrong. I guess it just doesn't, I guess the word doesn't work. I guess this faith stuff doesn't work. You just dug up the seed and killed it. With your mouth. See, the devil has to have somebody that he can use their mouth. The devil doesn't have a physical body. God doesn't have a physical body. But he has the body of Jesus Christ on this earth, and you and I, if you're born again, we are members individually of that body. We're the body of Christ members individually, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And so he needs, he needs a body on this earth that he can speak through. Words of faith. The devil needs physical bodies on this earth, Unfortunately, sometimes even Christians, that he can put thoughts in their minds and say, well, 
yeah, you know, and cause you to say, well, I guess it just doesn't work. I don't know about this faith stuff. See, the devil able to use your own mouth to dig that seed out of the ground, which is your heart, the good ground. All right, it's got to be left in the ground. Now, the seed has to be watered. And I come on to John chapter, well, anyway, uh, it's got to be watered. And so we, and Jesus is the word and he is the living water. So we water the seed with our words. We begin to, we begin to say, well, I praise God. You know, I planted the seed. I ask, I believe I receive. So I just continue to praise and thank you, Lord, for, for, for the wonderful harvest that's coming, for the answer to prayer that's coming. I just praise and thank you for it. Before I feel the taste, it, feel it, taste it, touch it, or smell it, before I see anything and feel anything, I thank you, Lord. It's already done. According to your word, I've asked and I believe I received. So that's how you water the word, with your mouth, with your words. You water the word. And, 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 and then you also use your mouth to keep the weeds out of your heart. And, and of course, in, we know in First John chapter 1, verse 9, if we've sinned, now that's a weed. Sin will destroy faith. Now, if we've sinned, then according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, we need to be quick to repent and thank God for forgiving us and, 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 and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. And then we stand in his presence like we've never, ever done anything wrong. We stand in his presence like we didn't even dig up the seed. We, met, we pull the weed out. We pull that thorn out with our mouth. And uh, I don't know, let me come back here to another another passage and um, it says in, in James 3 10 out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing my brother these things ought not to be so so out of our same mouth we can either speak doubt and unbelief and pull the seed out or we can speak faith and praise and thanksgiving and water the seed and just know by faith that it'll grow remember proverbs 18 and 21 death and life is in the power of the tongue truth or lies god or the devil so death and life. So speak life to the seed. Praise God for the answer to prayer before you see it, taste it, smell it, or touch it. Taste, speak life. Speak life. Speak words of life. Words of life. And John, or Romans 4, 17 rather, God calls those things which be not as though they were. By faith, I see the answer to that prayer. By faith, I see that. Call those things which be not as though they were. Do like God. Imitate God. And you will see the answer to prayer. Praise be to God. How do you, well, anyway, so then the other thing is, and this goes along with what we've been talking about, Mark chapter 4 and verse 28 and 29, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head, but when the grain ripens, it immediately you put in the sickle. Now, God's word is the same way as it is in the natural realm. At first, there'll be that little blade that comes out of the ground. And you may be just a little hint things are going in the right direction or whatever. Just leave it alone. Don't pull the blade out. <laughs> and then in time, of course, there'll be where there'll be the uh, there'll be the uh, like it says here, there'll be the head, the first the blade and then the head will come. And, and then and then I remember when the grain of wheat would come up in the field and we would go out and we check. We pick a head and we'd, we'd squeeze it. And if there was juice coming out, then it was too early. It wasn't ripe yet. So it's too early to, to harvest. But once you get ahead and you got good hard kernels in that head, now it's time to get the combine into that field and let's get the harvest in the grain bin while we can. So don't try to harvest it prematurely. Now what happens a lot of times, uh, people maybe are believing for a certain amount of money for something, maybe they need $400 and 100 comes in and it just seems like, where's the other 300, man? It's not coming fast enough. Well, it's the, the head's not ripe yet. But so what do we do? We go borrow the money and get to become a slave to the lender. Jump ahead of God. We try to yield the harvest ahead of time. And then we end up with a, with a, with a, a debt that we have to pay. If we'd have just stood, if we'd have held fast, left it alone, the whole answer to prayer would have come and you wouldn't have to borrow any money to finish it out or whatever it is. So wait patiently. And then the harvest will come at the right time when it's ripened. And then we can pick up on that in the next session. We'll just finish out that thought. And uh, meanwhile, 
you just uh, be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do and looking forward to seeing you the next session.